to get started with creating slicers for pivot tables, I have a list of data right here. These are the, actually the top 200 YouTubers in the world. And surprisingly, I don't recognize many of these channels because I probably just don't watch enough YouTube. And we want to be able to create a pivot table off of this data. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to inserts, click on pivot table and just select new worksheet or keep all the settings the same on Mac Excel, hit OK. And you have a pivot table created there for you. It's completely empty. There's no rows or columns. Uh, but what you could do if you want to simplify things or do things faster is go back to your table of data, click on insert pivot table, or sorry, go to insert then recommended pivot tables. And it will automatically, Excel will automatically create a brand new worksheet for you that has like a pre-created pivot table, but this one's not super useful for us. So I'm just going to delete this worksheet, but just showing you a way to kind of shortcut a way to creating a pivot table, pivot table really fast. So I'm gonna set up this pivot table. And if I take a look at this, the underlying data, what I have here is channel name, the category the channel belongs in, the main video category, the username of the channel, the number of followers, things like likes, engagement views, all the kind of typical stats you would imagine for a YouTube channel. And so what I'm gonna do with this pivot table is create a pivot table that shows only the main categories for these YouTube channels, then kind of like a subcategory for the YouTube channels, and then I'm going to find the average number of followers and the average number of likes. So let's go back to our pivot table here. I'm going to look for main video category in my rows and drag that to my rows. So now you can see these are all the unique main video categories in my data set. I'm then going to click on category, drag category into my rows. So now I have this category that goes below the main video categories. And then I'm gonna drag in the likes into the values section or value uh, values fields of my pivot, pivot table settings. And then I'm going to drag in the followers. Now this pivot table, this raw pivot table, I would say is not very well formatted. I, you can't really tell what the labels are in the rows. We know that's main video category and category, but it's not clear which is which. Also the numbers here are not properly formatted. So I'm gonna do a few things to clean this up. Also there's this blank uh, category, which I don't really want to show up in my pivot table. So let's look at how to make this a little easier to look at and well formatted that we could actually copy and paste perhaps into a PowerPoint somewhere down the line. I'm gonna right click on some of likes and then go to field settings, click on number and then just convert this to a number format that I like. So no decimal places, use the, use the 1000 separator, hit okay. And then also I'm gonna turn this into an average because I wanna find the average number of likes across these top level main video categories and categories. So I hit okay. So this is going out looking a little better. I'm going to do the same thing for some of followers. Go to field settings, click on number, format this with the number format that I like, hit okay. Make this an average as well. And then for fixing these row level categories to make them more clear what they are, I always 99% move to the default classic pivot table layout. I don't even know why Excel makes this like the default layout, but you go to pivot table analyze options, and then in the pivot table options, I just click on the classic pivot table layout checkbox, hit okay. And now you can see that this is more easy to read in terms of a pivot table. You can see that this first column is the main video category. The category now acts kind of like as a sub level of the main video category. And I'm gonna click on this drop down in the category uh, field and remove that blank just to make things a little cleaner. Now you can quickly see for like the comedy main video category, I have like these four subcategories of, if you will, for that comedy category and then down here, so on and so forth. So now we've gone ahead and formatted our pivot table a little easier. And the question is, what if you want your teammates, your colleagues, your stakeholders to be able to filter this pivot table easily? Well, the hard part about this is that in order to do this, you have to, let's say I want to filter for the entertainment 
main video category, one of your teammates would have to go into this drop down and then click on select all, then click on entertainment, and now you have the entertainment category selected. If I want to get rid of this, I have to reselect all the categories here. And it's doable, but it's just very, very manual. And if you have many different pivot tables on a worksheet, manually filtering each pivot table one by one is going to be pretty tough. So the way to get around this, or rather the feature to make this easier to filter, is to use a slicer, which is the whole subject of this episode. So I'm going to click on my pivot table, click on pivot table analyze, and right in the middle or near the middle of the ribbon is insert slicer. And you have the option to select all the different columns from your data set, from our YouTube data set, to pick a column to basically filter on and or rather create a slicer for. And we want to create a slicer for my main video category here. So I'm going to click on main video category, hit OK. And you're pretty much done. This is basically what a slicer looks like. It has a drop uh, list of all your unique main video categories in this case. You'll see some things have been um, grayed out because when we remove that blank category here in the category, it uh, it got rid of these, it got rid of those um, categories that belong to the blank categories. I'm actually just gonna re unselect these blanks again. And these should go blank again, there you go. So if I wanna quickly filter this pivot table for entertainment, I can just click on entertainment and look how fast it is. So this slicer is like a unique, like a very user-friendly, easy to use way to filter a pivot table without having to click on the drop down here. You notice how like this drop down automatically filters entertainment because I clicked on this in my slicer. If I want to get rid of this filter, I can just click on this X thing here. And it just goes back to my totally unfiltered view. Now, if I want to be able to select multiple options in my slicer, all you need to do is click on this little checkbox with these like list of check items, multi-select, hit on that. And now I can click on, you can deselect all the filters or values that don't matter for you. And you can have multiple values selected in your, in your uh, slicer. So that's how you can get multiple select, but by, but by default, a slicer simply has individual selection selected. I'm going to keep that individual uh, selection turned on for now. Remove the slicer, remove, remove the filter. And last thing to know about slicers is that in addition to being easy to use, you can format the slicer to maybe have certain colors or match the brand, um, brand styles of your company. One thing you'll typically do with a slicer when there's many different options in, this, in the list is to put these options into columns. So if you click on the slicer and then click on the slicer option in the ribbon, there is, all, there are all these options that you can click on to format the actual look and feel of your slicer. I'm going to move this so that it has three columns in my slicer. And notice how I can kind of expand my slicer a little bit. And this looks a little easier to use. I can just click on individual values now. And it's everything is in one view pane versus having to like scroll down. So I kind of like adding things to multiple columns. If I right click the slicer, you can see there's even more size and property settings here. You can change the position, the layout. Um, there, yeah, you can, what is this lock thing? I'm not sure what this is actually. Uh, but you can see there's all different kinds of ways you can format the slicer. You can change the color of the slicer. I'm gonna leave the default blue for now. I think there's some more you can do here, slicer settings. Yeah, there's even some more things you can do here with slicer settings. Sometimes you might hide items with no data. This is useful when your data set somehow gets deleted or certain value, certain rows of your data set get deleted and you might want to hide items with no data. Um, there's just a few other options. I'm not gonna go over these right now, but this show items deleted from data source, this is useful because sometimes you delete data from your raw data set but the slicer will still show those values in the slicer. And that slicer settings here, this one, show items lead from the data source, 
if you uncheck this, then any deleted rows from your data source will also delete those items from the slicer. So just some more kind of uh, niche, I would say, settings to be aware of in your slicer. Now, the last thing to know about slicers is that they can control multiple pivot tables. And this is one of the most important features of slicers that I love because it makes creating dashboards in Excel really, really useful because now you can have 10, 10 pivot tables on the same worksheet and one slicer can filter all of those in one go. So the quickest way to connect a slicer to another pivot table is simply copy and paste, copy and paste an existing pivot table that has the slicer connected to it. So I'm just gonna select this entire pivot table. I think I can just right click, field settings. Nope, I think I'm just gonna select all this right here. Copy this. I'm gonna move over here to column J, paste that. And I have a new pivot table here. And just for the sake of this example, I'm gonna remove the category from my for my second pivot table here, oops, I'm going to show field list. I'm going to remove the category, drag this back to the field name, and I'm going to drag in, let's say, main topic, just to make these pivot tables look a little different. Notice now how, like, I have, for comedy, there's this category, these few four categories, but now in the second pivot table, I have comedy that shows these uh, seven main topics or whatever. Now, let's see what happens when I click on one of the options in my slicer entertainment. Notice how both of these pivot tables get filtered to entertainment. Same thing if I click on anything else. And all I had to do was copy and paste this first pivot table into the same worksheet. And I can rearrange this pivot table however I want. Maybe I want to, let's say, let's say I want to remove the average of followers here. And maybe I want to put the main topic in the columns. And now if I click on these uh these the options of the slicer everything gets filtered down to that specific value or main video category in both of my pivot tables now what's really cool is i can also see how this pivot table now has changed because i put the main topic across the col across the columns or across the row oh yeah, across the columns what i can also do is create pivot charts if i click on this pivot table here on my first one click on insert and then click on pivot chart this pivot chart is kind of a direct reflection of this pivot table. I'm, going to, I'm just going to kind of expand this a little more so you can see it. Notice here along the bottom I have the main video categories, and then within the main video categories I have all the kind of subcategories, if you will. Now if I go back to my slicer, I can click on entertainment and it automatically filters my pivot chart as well to that specific main video category. You can see how super powerful this is for creating a giant interactive dashboard for your teammates because now they can just use this one single slicer to filter everything on that table on that worksheet without having to click on the individual drop downs for every single pivot table um, in your worksheet now the big note to note the one of the mo other important features about slicers is that you can disconnect the slicer from certain pivot tables so let's say I don't want to have this pivot table, this slicer connected to this second pivot table we created earlier. The reason why you might want to do this is because let's say you want to have three or four slicers on your dashboard, which is pretty common because you want your audience, your teammates to be able to filter the dashboard in multiple ways. And maybe certain slicers control certain parts of the dashboard. All you need to do is right click on the slicer, go to report connections, and notice how I have these two pivot tables. Now, pivot table seven and pivot table nine, these are not very well named. Um, the way you can find the names for the pivot tables is by clicking on the pivot table itself and then clicking on pivot table analyze. And notice here in the left part of the ribbon, you see pivot table seven is the name. And if you click on here, pivot table the second pivot table, you see it's pivot table nine. So usually you want to rename these pivot tables to be more unique. So I can call this one, let's say, main pivot, and it's also a bad name. But second pivot table might be like YouTubers by topic. And now if I right click in my slicer, go to report connections, you'll see now the pivot tables 
are more uniquely named and it just makes it easier to know what your slicer is connected to in terms of pivot tables because you might have many many pivot tables in this list so if i want to disconnect this slicer from this pivot table which i called youtubers by topic i simply just uncheck that checkbox hit ok and now when i click on the slicer it only filters this first pivot table and also this pivot chart because this pivot chart is connected to that pivot table and so that's basically how you can create a really unique uh, dashboard by using slicers because you have this slicer which can control all aspects of the pivot tables pivot charts and even other aspects of your dashboard and the kind of culmination of this episode is kind of uh, self-serving because I just released a new class on Skillshare all about advanced pivot tables and you can click on the sh uh, link in the show notes or if you're watching this on YouTube you can click on the YouTube uh, notes to see more about this class we can learn more all about creating pivot tables and creating a dashboard using my Skillshare class.